How can professional truck drivers set up a small kitchen and sink in their trucks without plumbing? Hello, I'm Vicki Simons with TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com and I will ask you if you get value from this to give me likes, shares, and hearts. I'm going to be doing a show and tell tonight uh, with some actual in, you know, various kinds of items that Mike and I have used over the years uh, to set up this kind of a system in our truck and please be aware that this did take us years to uh, sort of formulate or you know modify to where it would work for us and it may be slightly different for you okay uh, first of all every professional truck driver has got their own priorities regarding what it is that they want to eat and uh, there are different truck configurations on how they can store things in their trucks and on the small kitchen uh, page of our website we do have 1400 pages plus on the website but on that particular page which I will put the URL to after this broadcast is over uh, we talked about some of the ways that we stored our foodstuffs our you know cooking equipment that kind of thing uh, the portable toilet all sorts of stuff in the truck that we had over the years okay uh, different ones in a previous broadcast I showed you uh, one of the ice chests that Mike and I used it to be able to keep our food cold and of course I went through various broadcasts I talked with you about uh, devices to keep your food cold being the ice chest that was the last one I'm gonna pull that plug out uh, the ice chest uh, thermoelectric cooler and the uh, compact refrigerator not in that order okay and so uh, be aware that part of our setup was to take the large ice chest that was on the floor and use that as a cooking base and we actually got a little fancier at times and uh, this is the large wooden cutting board this is a very nice one and it's also extremely uh, sturdy we use this on top of the bed okay on top of the lower bunk uh, to set up as a cooking uh, platform specifically for a, an electric skillet okay so while we were doing things on top of the ice chest or actually Mike may have actually sat on the ice chest and worked on the top of the bunk but you got to be aware that when you're working with stuff that will slosh some liquidy stuff that you got to be careful how you uh, maneuver that stuff around okay so I've covered the storage angle various ways to be able to put things for example under your bunk or in the cabinets okay depending upon your own personal preference on how you do that and I should add that uh, one of the things that drove me crazy when we were rolling down the road was to have things clinking in the back like silverware rattling against glass or something like that so we eventually went to a setup and I've got that a little farther over than I want for it to be but in the uh, broadcast last night I was talking about the first aid kit and I have a hinged plastic box okay and we eventually got to the place where we you we were using that box to store our silverware and some of the big utensils in that so that was one of the uh, ways that we were able to uh, very easily store some things that we took with us okay uh, in addition to uh, the place to cook all right the uh, situation is once you've got your food prepared in your truck how do you clean up afterwards okay now that being said the portable toilet was the receptacle for all of our wastewater okay and this is an example okay of a sturdy a sturdy jug this is an old apple juice jug and some people say don't use an old apple juice jug or any kind of a juice jug okay if you if you clean these things out very well okay you're not going to have any problems or at least in our experience we haven't had any problems but you want to make sure especially that you take care of what's up in the lid all right you want to make sure that you got that but anyway we had a bunch of these types of things in fact this may have been one of the ones that we actually had in the truck at one time it uh, but anyway these things are much sturdier than the uh, the plastic gallon jugs of water that you get say at Walmart or some of these other places that are very thin and flimsy okay but anyway we had a bunch of these in the truck I don't remember probably at least nine or ten of them at one time because we would use this for drinking water 
cooking water, cleaning water, everything. Okay, the only thing that we didn't use was to charge the top of the portable toilet with. Okay, so, but anyway, we use this um, as, an, you know, something to hold the water. And we were able to be able to refill these from various sources, for example, a water fountain or a water venting machine at Walmart. Uh, rarely would we ever actually run the tap water Okay, because who knows what's in a, a tap. But anyway, uh, water uh, carried by um, in a, a jug like that. And I showed you this in a previous broadcast. This is um, our hot pot. Okay, the little kitchen kettle. This is a wonderful device, okay, for being able to cook stuff like soups and stews, boil noodles, steam vegetables, things like that. I've showed that to you before. It also works tremendously well as a way to be able to warm up the water when you get ready to wash your dishes. Okay, so um, I'm also going to point out this is not a 12 volt appliance. This is an AC powered appliance and I recommend that you go with that if you are allowed to use a 12 volt inverter. Okay, now Dawn dishwashing liquid is the one that I recommend why okay not only does it work very well to be able to clean your dishes but you can actually use it to clean your windshield and your windows okay uh, some things just don't cut the grease the grime the road salt the bugs but this stuff has worked for us in the past okay in fact I think some of the truck stops uh, have used this uh, in, in the buckets, okay, when drivers are getting ready to wash their windshield, okay, if you don't have any of this stuff, I recommend just a little tiny bottle like this to, to take with you, all right, this routinely sits on the back of our sink at the house, okay, now, notice it's the blue stuff, okay, the blue stuff, this does not have the antibacterial stuff in it or whatever, I'm going to recommend that you stay away from all that antibacterial stuff because it could be harmful, okay? The triclosan is not healthy for your skin. So, the blue stuff for the Dawn. All right, a little bit of Dawn in the water, in the, um, in the pot, or in an electric skillet, okay? And just use either a dish rag, dish cloth, or a baby wipe. We've used baby wipes in the past. And uh, clean out your stuff, and then basically when you're done, okay, with that, dump your water into your portable toilet. Make sure you've got room to receive it, all right? I don't recommend dumping old water out the window of your truck, okay? If you're going to have to do that, take your dishes inside somewhere and clean them there, all right? Wherever it is that you are, whether, uh, hopefully, it won't be a truck stop, but if you are at a company terminal, okay, you can do that. Uh, but anyway, if you have a portable toilet, it works very well in, in your truck. All right, so that in a nutshell is how you set up a small kitchen and a small sink without plumbing. All right, let me give you some tips here. I mentioned using a non-12 volt appliance, okay, something that if, for example, you have to stay over in a hotel room, you can simply take that out of your truck and take it into the hotel room and plug it in and heat up your meals that way if you're going to do that. All right, obviously you can save a lot of money by cooking in your truck, also cleaning up after yourself. All right, some cases um, you can actually, um, you know, cook food that your home support team has uh, prepared in advance for you. I talk about um, meal portions, having all of your meals apportioned out like that. All right. And if your company forbids you from using a battery connected inverter, see if maybe you can use a 12 volt inverter, one of those that plugs into the cigarette outlet, in order to heat up some water in your crock pot. Okay, or if you just had a meal in your crock pot, there may be enough residual heat in the crock to be able to uh, put a little water in it, swish it around and clean it out that way. Now, when you're done with your washing, okay, you will want to rinse your dishes and your silverware, all of your utensils, and the, uh, the device that you're using to, to cook it with, your, your appliance, okay, and also then dry it out after you've rinsed it out very well. All right, some people have success in one ways. We've tried a, a number of different things, okay? But take a bunch of, say, uh, uh, regular dish towels with you 
when you're done with your dish towels drying out and even your dishcloth all right uh, rinse out your dishcloth as well as you can and then hang it over a hanger I'm going to pull uh, this off I don't have it prepared for um, showing to you but uh, this is just a regular hanger and it's got clothes pins and little uh, clips here okay you can do that or just hang it over the the bottom of your uh, hanger actually we used a fatter one so that the sides of your dish towels and your dish uh, cloths can dry out and then hang the thing over the side of your uh, upper bunk okay if you have that uh, lying down flat okay and that way uh, the the um, the airflow will eventually dry those out. Why not just put your uh, wet dishcloths directly into your uh, laundry bag? Because if you put them in there wet and they're all crumpled up and you don't get to your laundry for a period of time, ooh, ugh, mold and mildew can set in and it can ruin not only the rag or the towel, but it can ruin whatever it's near, okay? And we don't want that, okay? That's a whole other issue with the laundry. But the thing about it is, is um, this is a this is a just a crash course tonight in just a few minutes about how to set up a small kitchen and a small sink in your truck without plumbing. Are there any questions that I can answer or anything? Just let me know. Uh, feel free to uh, after this broadcast is over, if you want to, to send me a question, a comment, feedback. Have you had success doing something like this? Has your setup been different? Uh, what's your success rate been? Have you been able to save a lot of money by cooking and cleaning up afterwards in your truck? Has your setup been uh, similar, different? Send us a review, if you will. Let us know what's been going on with you. What kinds of appliances are you using? What sorts of setups are you using to be able to save money in your truck? This is Vicki Simons with TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com. If you can't get in touch with me while the broadcast is going, please feel free to leave a comment afterwards or get in touch with us through our website, TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com, or feel free to get in touch with us through our web, our, our um, social media platforms. We'll be glad to get back in touch with you. Okay, not seeing any comments or questions coming through at this time. I'm simply going to say we encourage uh, thinking outside the box as far as being able to save money on the road and within the next few days we're going to be wrapping up our 90 day commitment of making these daily Facebook live broadcasts. We actually started in mid-July. Can you believe it? Every night since mid-July it's been our goal to be able to put in at least one good tip every night about something having to do with uh, drivers saving money. And this is the last Savvy Saturday about uh, like meal preparation and food Food and various kinds of things having to do with saving money uh, that way. So, that being said, um, on behalf of Mike and myself, we just wish you safe travels and lots of money saving opportunities on the road. Feel free to give likes, shares, and hearts if you've gotten value from this. Thanks and have a great night and a great weekend.